Hi, folks. So um, today, as we approach uh, the last six weeks of Brown 1, um, we're going to start thinking and discussing value. Um, the more I learn about painting, the more I appreciate um, how important value is in doing uh, much more real, much more interesting paintings. So uh, what you see in front of you is the setup for an exercise that we're going to work on. Um, I've got uh, 10 different squares that are set up there that are about an inch square. And uh, this is sort of our destination, this uh, value sphere, uh, which you're going to be doing after we've done some discussion about value. So we can take this away. And the tool that we're going to be using is uh, my own version, which I sent you, of this uh, grayscale and value finder. These are super valuable in your, uh, in your education on, on value. And this value scale is to visual artists what, um, what this pitch pipe is to musicians. So just like musical tones have a, a, an absolute vibration, um, artists' values also have uh, a scale that's, that's really well set. So that um, if you're a photographer, for example, and you order a backdrop, uh, you want something that's going to be uh, like a, a value four or a value five, and then that's going to help you shoot much better photographs. But, uh, you know, a Kodak... Um, you know, value five backdrop is, is really a set thing. It'll always be the same. Um, and so let's dive into some value exercises. Um, so besides our grayscale, which is, which is kind of like our, our pitch pipe or our tuning fork, um, we're also going to tune our pencils. So um, I've got uh, two pencils that are two Bs and then one that's like a much richer, like a six B or so. But uh, what's important here is that I've tuned my pencils so that this one, if you can see, if I, if I turn it, um, I have taken a piece of sandpaper and I've sanded uh, a nice broad flat area with kind of soft edges. So this is going to be good for filling in large areas very quickly. I've got another pencil that's sharped, sharpened almost to a needle point, and that's good for very, very fine detail and getting into little corners. And then uh, this pencil is actually uh, tuned so it has more of like a bullet point, and that's that's good for other stuff too. So these are these are standard pencils. I also use a lot of mechanical pencils or uh, mechanical lead holders. And these are really nice because they're always the same size, they're always the same weight, so you can really kind of groove into them. So let's dive into value exercises. So value isn't something that you kind of learn and perfectly memorize, um, and then you don't need uh, value finders anymore. Um, it's, again, it's similar to music in which, you know, a musician doesn't necessarily perfectly memorize the entire musical perfect tonal scale. Uh, even people who uh, can grab a piece of music and sing it usually need uh, some sort of a note, maybe a concert A, uh, or the key that the music's in to kind of um, calibrate their voice. So anyway, this is all about calibrating and keeping things honest. And value has become important enough to me that you can see that I've taken a, a value finder and cut it in half. I've actually embedded it in my uh, in my painting palette. So this is my painting palette is a piece of glass with a value of four or five uh, gray paper behind it. Uh, the The color of the glass shifts the value just a teeny bit, but uh, it keeps you in the ballpark. And uh, I'm going to be doing uh, uh, portraits and figures, and so I'm setting up my palette sort of like. Um, uh, Actually, this format was suggested by a really great painter named Greg Mortensen. So I've got my basic palette here, which is black. Uh, there will be some burnt umber. That's raw umber, cadmium orange, cadmium red, yellow ochre, cad, red, uh, cad yellow medium, and titanium white. So uh, these are my, this is my basic spectrum uh, 
and all of the chroma that I'm going to start with. But as I start mixing uh, flesh tones here, I'm going to modulate those tones. I'm going to adjust their chroma because most of the things that we want to paint in the world are low chroma, uh, especially in portraits. If you look at Bouguereau um, and uh, some of the greatest painters or, or even Caravaggio, so much of the flesh tones are not high chroma. Anyway, so, um, or is it Bouguereau? Anyway, um, I've got my basic uh, chromatic scale here, and then I've ha I have a value scale here. And you can see that I've pre-mixed uh, a value 8, a value 6, a value 3, and that's my full intensity Van Dyke Brown, and that's full intensity Titanium White, which is actually a little whiter than value 10 on the scale. But uh, it really kind of registers my thinking, and like I said, it just it, this scale kind of really keeps me honest as I'm painting and keeps my value uh, decisions more accurate. So here's the exercise for each of these uh, little blocks, uh, except for value 10. Value 10 is actually just going to be the, the color of the paper uh, or the tonality of the paper. Uh, since we're not uh, drawing on, on a gray paper, we're not going to be heightening with charcoal. So for our purposes here, uh, the equivalent of staring into the sun is this uh, square, uh, value 10. Um, and the deepest, darkest coal mine uh, under the mountains of West Virginia uh, are represented by uh, value 1 here, and then everything in between. So one of the really important things about this exercise uh, in, in beginning drawing is getting getting your brain to actually care that there's a difference between uh, value nine, value eight, or value seven and value six, um, because your brain doesn't really want to care. Your your brain just wants to simplify things into uh, well, it's darker light. Uh, in fact, there are there are ten gradients or ten steps of value that we want to start practicing with. In reality, though, there are thousands or millions of, of variants. But this is a great place to start. There are always nuances in between. In between these steps, there are always nuances, and there always will be. But this is a great place to start. So um, I'm going to uh, try to match the value 6 on the grayscale with this little cubicle here on the page. And I'm going to do that um, by using initially a very, very soft touch on the page, and I'm using kind of a really fast uh, overlapping oval. And I'm watching the value come up. I'm not trying to just stomp it in. I'm, I'm watching the value come up as I do overlapping layer upon layer of uh, zillions of graphite atoms. And when I'm pretty happy that I've gotten close to value 6, I'll try to sort of fill in this entire square with what I've determined is a value 6. So what's important here is to, um, is to have no texture and to have no uh, descriptive um, sort, of, sort of noise. This wants to be super smooth, like smooth like a gravy sandwich, like smooth as the finest silk. Because once you start getting textures or visible lines, you start describing things. You start describing wood grain or grass um, or hair texture. Your values in your value study want to be absolutely super pure. Um, it, just as if a value six cloud has touched down on your page, or uh, if you could exhale value six as as a as a deep dark breath, uh, or if you had an airbrush, or if you had a, a spray can, that's how smooth this wants to be. Absolutely no textures.
Okay, so coming back a couple minutes later, um, I've gotten a pretty good head start. There are still some things here I'm not that thrilled about. I may have to go in with a, a kneaded eraser and just kind of like pick out some of these darker textures. I may um, really want to spend some more time just filling in the corners. It's, it's not really that important to make this a perfect square. What is important though, is to really match this value six with your pencil value six as if, uh, like I said, like a, a value six fog has set in on your page. And then the rest of the exercise is to fill in all of the other cells with uh, their relative values. And you may have to switch pencils to softer leads to value, uh, to, you know, six Bs or eight Bs. Um, and the, the other secret ingredient to, to doing these ex exercises is having good music on. And uh, while I was filling in uh, this cell with, with really soft overlapping ovals, uh, I was listening to a, a musician by the name of Jordi Saval and uh, his ensemble Hesperian 20. I was listening to some really fast uh, early music uh, Spanish dances. So that's the exercise. Uh, that is your challenge and that is your rite of passage as you as your brain learns to respect distinctions and value. And this sets you up for the very next exercise in this series, which will be gradients. Okay, see you soon.